Hello everybody, how is it going? So, we're playing some law uh, against a white beard in OPO3. Matchup, I still think, is pretty good for law. Definitely no complaints. My opening hand is kind of the stones. <laughs> Three searchers, a restand law. We sadly whiff off the dawn, but it's okay. I was definitely seething, but <laughs> we're all good now. We're all good now. I don't know. Sometimes it's like, it's not like the absolute worst whiffing off of a, a searcher, but it always just feels so bad in the moment. You're like, oh my god, I'm just missing a card for my hand for free. But it's okay. So we go six. Probably played to Don and Nami. I definitely could have uh, not swung six and played like a Veggie, but I kind of just feel like it's always worth swinging that six every turn. Just uh, always getting, just keeping their hand, you know, somewhat limited. Also, we whiff off Nami as well. <laughs> I, I guarantee I was so tilted there. I was definitely not happy. But um, it's all right. We're looking fine, even though we uh, we're missing out on two more cards in our hand. It's all good, because next turn we'll definitely be able to use our leader effect, and uh, that's our reward for whiffing twice. We get a blocker law there, so we're looking we're looking solid. We're looking solid. Probably just swing for six play two veggies and then be able to swing for six after using our law effect to play the Zoro. Sounds like a good plan. Also, this list is a little bit different than uh, the old one. I put Hawkins to one and I cut uh, X Drake and I put in two Punk Gibsons and uh, I took out two of the 2K Brooks and put in two of the Film Brooks just to kind of test it. Uh, I think I also put in one more Radical Beam. But I've always thought <laughs> uh, Film Brook was really cool in this deck. So I, I had to give it a try. I had to give it a try. He has a pretty solid ace turn here. Goes, uh, puts my Zoro down to 3k. And uh, I definitely could have used both my blockers there. My two veggies to protect the Zoro. But he could have also just swung with the Marco. But actually, that would have just... Oh wait, no. We couldn't have blocked it for free with... Um, our luck because it was also ace. So yeah, I mean, I think what uh, letting it go is fine, and only end up using one of the blockers because uh, I'm pretty sure he would have swung with the Marco. Because he wasn't in that much danger, honestly. But we will swing for six at lead. He'll two K out of that, and then we'll play to Don, pick up an Otama. Still got five Don to work with. We're probably gonna either play a the Chopper or the Nami. We could, yeah, alternatively. I like this. I like this. We'll play the Otama and then beat up the ace. <laughs> uh, definitely could have, um, instead of swinging at lead, done that first. And I think that was definitely the play, but sometimes I, I did have to... I'd have to basically play, have played the Dadan to see that I would find an Otama. Actually, I'm completely lying. I had another one. So <laughs> if I saw that line a bit sooner, it definitely would have been um, a bit better. But he'll immediately block with the Marco. And uh, then he also immediately lets the ace go. So maybe that's telling us he doesn't have a ton of counter. But we'll use leader effect. We'll play restand law. And I I'm getting aggressive. You know what? I'm swinging. I'm trying to clear that Marco as well. Give me more cards. <laughs> but yeah, that's definitely something I like see with law. That uh, I'll like forget that Otama into beating something up as a line. And then I'll think of it like a little bit late. But here I didn't get punished for it. I definitely think I should have started my turn with Otama the ace and then just going five at it with lead. But it'll swing six with this leader, then play Whitebeard. He definitely should have just played Whitebeard first. Uh, the only thing that could have punished him was like a Punk Gibson trigger into me attempting to out it, but I don't even think that is that bad. So I definitely think play the Whitebeard first and make me deal with the 8k attack. I did, have a, I did have a veggie though, so I was probably never dropping too many cards there. But not a ton to do this turn. We'll just go 8 with our leader, 8 with our restand law. And uh, we probably want to leave 2 up for the Punk Gibson, which is super good against Whitebeard and Marco. Just being able to tap down that Mar uh, not Marco, sorry, and Ace, Whitebeard and Ace. Just being able to tap down that Marco is like super strong. But. Is this the turn where I mess something up? No, it's not. Okay. Oh, wait. Yes, it is. <laughs> I just, uh, my, my brain fumbled and just completely forgot he's at 8k. <laughs> but, uh, 
It's alright. It's alright. It happens. But yeah, we'll leader effect, play the... Take back to Dawn, play Law, and then bounce into a Chopper. And we'll leave two up for Punk Gibson. And I think... Yeah, I'll definitely save that. Just because we have two Chomp Blockers and another Law. So it should be pretty easy to defend both of our Laws here. Especially if he plays another 9 cost because he won't be able to pop either of my blockers. So we'll go 10 at my blocker law. I'll probably just trade the chopper or the veggie, either one. I think I'm thinking about punk gibsoning. <laughs> That's a funny phrase uh, to tap the Marco, but I don't end up doing it because he's already kind of low cards in hand. And honestly, I'm probably not killing him this turn, so... We'll take uh we'll leave the Marco for now. And uh here I had like Otama in my head. I'm like, if I minus two to his ten his nine drop, it's like the same number as hitting his leader, but in this case I kinda get rewarded by you know, outing a ten K body. So that's what I end up doing. I think uh I think it was a good call. Just uh, alleviates a little bit of pressure on us. So we'll go 8 with our blocker law, 8 with our restand law, and we have another restand law, so we're really going to, again, beat this white beard up. I'm uh, not going to save 2 for the punk Gibson, just because I, I want to try to out this or put him on 0 cards. Either one is cool with me. And if he lets this go, I definitely could leave one of my laws up with the restand law, just to have more defense. So yeah, well, I don't think I end up doing that, though. I think I'm like, I'm just going to get aggressive. Let me see if I can put him down to one life. Oh, no. Okay. I do restand my blocker law, and we play it safe, which I like, too. E either one I think I was fine with. Well, it'll go 12 at my restand law, popping the veggie. We're probably just letting it go. I think I'm okay with taking my one more life or honestly both my life this turn just because I'm definitely going for game because he does not have enough cards to really defend this would have been a, a pretty nice turn to leave two up for the punk Gibson but I really wanted to out the the nine drop so we kind of committed but we'll go seven oh here, sorry he'll go seven we'll uh, block with our law and counter out and I'll play another Marco so maybe we're a bit delayed in going for game here. We'll see. Because uh, he could have a lot of events. Player Nami. I almost missed the chopper. Thankfully I didn't. But we can definitely survive another turn with a Punk Gibson and a Beam in hand. But we'll go one Dawn on our resand long. Sorry, two Dawn. <laughs> Forgot again. Uh, he's... Leader 6k, so he'll guard point out of it. Go one dawn on leader, swing for six. He'll guard point out of that as well. We'll go eight with our blocker law. Card point out of that, so he was not bluffing at all. He did have three events, so we don't end up being able to kill him here. So, but it pretty much means he has to go for game next turn. And I think I was just debating if I wanted to trade off my law for one of his Marcos, and I do think I end up doing it just because I'm, I'm very confident that I'll live with a. Uh, our Punk Gibson and our Radical Beam. And uh, he actually concedes there. Well, thanks for watching, guys.